Yo, can you hear me? Yeah. How's it going? Sorry, man? I forgot that uh, you can do a call person to person. I went yeah. over to uh, Ash just to set up voice. Yeah, we can we can do it either way. I just figured this is just as easy to set up the person to person DM voice instead. I mean, we can go over to the public channel if you want. That's yep, entirely that's up to you. Yep, just uh, there's a lot of features of Discord I haven't used yet. It it's uh, staggering sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, having a good day yeah it was uh, a long one yeah I feel you how old is your baby uh, almost three months okay uh, we had ours in October so we're hitting four months uh, tomorrow actually so congratulations uh, thanks yeah yeah congrats to you as well boy or girl girl Nice, nice. We had our first boy. I've got two older older girls as well, so. Excellent. So you've got a nice spread. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said I feel bad for my my youngest son. His gr first girlfriend is going to have a hell of a time with his sisters, that's for sure. <laughs> I just, I just no. know it. <laughs> but um, do you mind if I record you... the game for our YouTube? No, I don't mind. Okay, great. Thanks. I appreciate that. All right. Um, yep. So, I, like I said, I got the game up. It's just got a password of tournament on it. There you go. Perfect. And no, I don't want to update my password for the site. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it does, it asked me that too. I'm like, uh, nope, nope, I'm good. Vindicky does that every time I put a password on the game. That's so funny. Uh, it's part of the DNA of the code, and uh, yeah. He's crying. Are you are now you're you're helping Dijon with this project, aren't you? Or is uh, it somebody just, uh, just helping with playtesting because I'm not really good at coding. Gotcha. I uh, I'm working on building a card game inside of Unreal Development right now. It's been quite cool. the process. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Let's get her started here. A whole bunch of game projects and things that are. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Shuffle Bus. I'm your host, Jesse, back here again with another Ashtecky Master Set Tournament game. This time I'm playing 4649 Matt. Well, just because of and he has brought Cole to the table with four natural dice, three illusion dice, and three ceremonial. I am playing Maoni with five natural dice, four charm, and one ceremonial. So we're currently working on picking our first five. Looks like I grabbed the silver snake, the gilder, the iron, the three-eyed owl, and I think we grab a golden veil and a blood archer, if I'm not mistaken here. Yeah, that's part of the reason I want um, smaller. Coal is particularly problematic for yeah, yeah. smaller units, but fortunately, gilder and three-eyed owl require a pretty hefty investment from coal in order to remove them. Whereas um, Snake is obviously very good also in that sort of scenario. Not sure what to expect from the coal player. Obviously, I think Hammer Knight is pretty pretty easy to see coming here. 
Dorset, I think, because of her. I think it's easy for us to see of the Gilder potentially on his side, Sample. also Sample. potentially Miss Spirits on his side. Uh, that six battlefield is a real threat. So uh, I think we're pretty well positioned in this fight. Uh, I think Mayoni in the Master set and the Silver Snake might be the best set of Phoenix Borns and Loyalty cards in the Master set. Uh, I think Cole is very good for sure, but I think Cole really comes into his own much yeah. later in the release of Reborn. <laughs> Although I will say that 100 Blades is one of the only sweepers in the master set. So if your opponent is playing a wide board strategy, then Cole is probably one of the best at dealing with wide board strategies. So we're getting started here. It looks like I have first go. Um, nobody rolls, or he rolls a basic. So he got the choice, and I think he chose for me to go first. So, uh, yes. So he rolled one basic and chose for me to go first, him to go second. So I just go ahead and put the owl down immediately. One of the benefits of putting the owl down is that I can um, threaten the board, but I want to make a couple of nature uh, dice here into power sides um, just to have them on tap. I also had to make a blood archer um, play. So, and we lost a blood archer, a molten gold, and uh, I forget what the other card was, but. Um, you just kind of have to make those decisions and remember that any card that was in your deck is not, is more or less not worth anything until it's in your hand and ready to be played. So I'm not going to lose any sleep over one Molten Gold gone, um, although it does make reaching late game sometimes and closing a game out a little bit more difficult. We are running some copies of Hypnotize, I think a single copy of Hypnotize just for the potential bypass if we need to with the snake. Uh, but I think we're really in a position to hold and control this game through three close combats, Gilder and Blood Archers and all of those things. So um, Matt's going to go here. Uh, we lost, a, just for reference, a Hammer Knight, Molten Gold, and a Blood Archer. Um, We'll see what he does. So the first thing he does is he plays the Miss Spirit. So we were right on in choosing Miss Spirit or thinking Miss Spirit might be a card. Like I said, I think Gilder is really well positioned. He he does meditate a Stormwind Sniper to get the ceremonial power up, which is sort of telegraphing the Hammer Knight. Um, so I think that's our best bet is to go ahead and play the Owl here. This is going to force him to play the Hammer Knight or at least force him to play a card. And we're going to get one of four, you know, of his key cards here because he's not going to have time to respond and kill the owl uh, before Hammer Knight is played. Um, I really like Illusion just in general. I just really like Owl uh, in Master Set. I think it's really good. Uh, it's really good outside of that as well because you've got an O2 body and it punishes your opponent if they don't have an answer for it and they keep it up round over round. And I think those are the kinds of things you want to be doing when you talk about various strategies on how to win advantage in Ashes. And Ashes is really a game about advantage. And Neil, uh, my co-host on the Shuffle Bus, will be uh, putting out a written primer on competitive ashes here that will happen in the next um, oh probably the next week or so and maybe even before this video ends up live on our YouTube channel so if you haven't been to the shufflebus.com uh, totally understand we don't put a lot of stuff out there but we are starting to look at doing some more written content for ashes as well and so we will be posting from time to time casual deck lists there, things that we don't, wouldn't necessarily want to make videos on, but still want to uh, put out into the world. And then obviously we'll put more video content out as we move forward also. 
Um, so he summons the Hammer Knight. Um, he targets with a nature yeah, power kind of like, kind of don't to deal like one damage to the owl. Calories. He's just sort of forcing me to use the owl, which is still on plan for us. Nice Nothing changes so here. What should happen is it should just allow you to pass even when you don't have a reaction. So, um, but I, again, we, we kind of are in, end up in a situation where we have a couple of outs for dealing with the Hammer Knight. One out is to summon a Gilder, shoot the Knight, then summon a Blood Archer and Command Strike it. But ideally, we still want to get a Silver Snake on board here in round one. And so <clears throat> there's a couple of different ways we can we can do that and still fight the knight. One is the knight can exhaust, which would be the ideal scenario for us, because then we sort of just can let the blood archer do all of the work. Um, we have on board ability to 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 sort of get there. Um, I mean, my opponent is down five dice, and they lost a fade away, which I think through the memory drain is is a really powerful hit i'm not sure what the last two cards are i don't remember coming back but he goes ahead and summons two miss spirits again just try he's trying to create board advantage through wider unit opportunity cost and we've taken away the slash i think by discarding a card it's going to be really hard to slash in this first round unless one of those cards in his opening five is expand energy and I think with Cole, you probably want to have one of your starting five cards be expand energy because it does turn on Cole ability, even if you don't have dice to, to spend any longer. Um, but we got two Miss Spirits and a Hammer Knight out against a three-eyed owl. Um, I still have four cards in hand and nine dice. My opponent has um, one card in hand. I'm not sure what that card... I think he's playing it right now. Oh, it's a Root Armor on the Hammer Knight. And Root Armor is problematic for us here. Yeah. Um, makes killing the Hammer Knight particularly difficult. I do like the armor symbol. On because the Blood Archer doesn't put wounds and it damages, it stops the Blood Archer and the Gilder from pinging. So... Yeah, I, I mean, I think we've got to think through... Yep, there's the state. Their plan. Overall, I feel pretty comfortable with uh, this set of plays. Uh, I currently have a main action of... I'm not sure what we did. Oh, we played the Silver Snake. And I don't think there's any necess you know, any reason to necessarily um, hide this the snake at all. Um, and so we can sort of now use the Mist Spirits as fodder because um, we can put the Gilder out and then with Gilder in play we can ping away the active uh, one of the Mist Spirits. Um, we can let Mayoni tank the first hit from the Hammer Knight if we summon the Snake. So if he if we summon Snake and he attacks Hammer Knight uh, Mayoni can just tank that. She'll be at five, which is puts her on sort of even ground with Cole at this particular stage. But I'm not sure that it really matters too much uh, in the grand scheme of things. And <clears throat> again, not knowing what my opponent has in hand, the the question has to become, you know. Um, I like how they have Why not use your nature die to ping away the uh, owl, and that way you don't have to waste a miss spirit attack into it. But yeah, we really are putting a lot of pressure on. Like, if my opponent tries to steady gaze here, yeah, it would. It's not so bad. We're not playing the blood archer, right? Like we're unable to play the blood archer if he does that. Um. And that could be problematic. We'll have to see, because that means we can't Golden Veil to protect the snake. Um, really what we have to do is, because of the root armor, we have to build the snake up to be a powerful enough unit to remove uh, the root armor. And this is, this is playing exactly what we wanted to do. So we let Mayoni tank the Hammer Knight hit, but Hammer Knight gets exhausted. This really allows 
the blood archer yeah. uh and um is really mayoni to prey on the hammer knight so we can play blood archer yeah I was and command that. strike I just got eaten alive. Uh, they had the missiles um, to take care of all my wolves. And we would do two to the knight. I came out. Uh, not and then time. Blood Archer would attack again, do two to it. It's, it's tough. Won't man. kill it in that scenario. So it's it's kind of tricky. Uh, that, that root armor hammer knight open is always going to be something where you're going to want to have the right answers. So we're just going to play slow here and start building our snake. I can't say it. Uh, so we summon, I mean, we go ahead and summon the the uh, Gilder. This also doesn't commit us if that last card in hand is a Steady Gaze on for the Snake or a Fade Away for the Snake. Like we can we can hold the Blood Archer and Golden Veil, so we're not committed yet to any sort of plan. Again, probably maybe like ten times. We can Nature Power away the other Mist Spirit that brings the Snake up to two attack. Um, about it for the first time yeah so with it being a butterfly monk i guess i'm just gonna little less concerned uh, this. um <laughs> you know like i was like there's no cards in hand now thing, so. butterfly monk. All, right. all exhausted out other than playing the butterfly monk and with no damage on coal like the monk play here is not necessarily going to save my opponent um from taking some sort of damage and making yeah, the monk be the, sort of um, uh, irrelevant score. overall. Now, I like monk a lot it's with Cole because Cole's right. health pool is low, so There's just something playing a 1-1 one, one that on can unigard and tank from a game. many hits short of the bypass units makes it um, like makes it a good, you know, good value defender in many circumstances. So... Um, yeah, we meditate one more way, and we go ahead and play the, I guess this the Blood game Archer. Has a certain, uh, reading component, but, uh, a lot of and, read into yeah, so, dice so now this commits us to, um, you know, kind of a slower play pattern where we can, um, Blood Archer, the Mist Spirit, you know, or if my opponent plays Butterfly Monk here, like the Butterfly Monk, I, I don't think you should be playing Butterfly Monk into this board presence. Um, but I think with a Gilder on board, looking like it's going to survive through the round, uh, both of my big units are safe from that Hammer Knight. Um, and so I think we're well positioned overall to deal with Hammer Knight. Um, and we're just going to hold the Golden Veil. I mean, at this point, there's no reason not to, right? So, um, we can just hold the GV. So he passes. He doesn't want to play that Butterfly Monk into the board. It makes sense. So I think we can Command Strike here. Um, yeah, we just go ahead and Blood Archer instead. The Snake is now worth two attack. Good combo here. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. Um... Which means it's one point of damage on PB, or uh, two points of damage on the PB, or um, or one point of damage on the Hammer Knight. Which then, we, if we do two, I think that's how I actually can get the Hammer Knight down. It forces the coal to block. Um, uh, Silver Snake attack coal. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah we put it on the Phoenix Born. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, I think that's okay. Like, I think, you know, again, we could have forced the coal to take three. Um, we still can do that in this scenario, but um, we turn on Butterfly Monk here, which maybe we don't want to do, but. Um, ideally, if, if we're really looking at best case scenario for a, a two round removal of the hammer knight because of the root armor hammer knight, then you go, um, you attack, you put one damage on the hammer knight from the snake. If coal doesn't block, you then command strike the hammer knight. And that would put with the blood archer, 
and then put two on it, putting it to three. And then you attack the Blood Archer. Yeah, little things like Blood Archer to uh, Hammer Knight. Uh, but you don't even have to do that all in one round. Like you can, you can sort of slow play and attack with the Gilder if you want to. Like, we'll come to that. see, I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily yeah, change Matt's play pattern because Matt doesn't have to summon the Butterfly Monk until it looks like I'm going to attack with something that could be dangerous to the Hammer Knight. Um, and we did, okay. we did back that up. So yeah. So ultimately I did do the one damage. I think the way I calculated it out was if I go one damage there, I go command strike for two damage and attack for three. That's enough to kill a five health hammer knight. Um, and we can still do that if he plays, um, if he plays the uh, butterfly monk. But he can't play the Butterfly Monk now because he didn't do it last turn. So, like, we just do two with Command Strike and then we attack for two. And, yeah. So, nice. now we're forcing the, the Butterfly Monk out by slow playing with the Gilder attack. Because otherwise, if he doesn't play Butterfly Monk here, um, didn't quite then... Okay. He, you know, all he can do is guard with coal. And the, and he may still guard with coal, but I still leave the round with one damage on the Hammer Knight and a Blood Archer that's fully healed. So I can just do the same play again. And this time I'll have a three health snake as well. So I have different resources to deal the three damage to kill the Hammer Knight in the top of the next round. Um, so snake sitting at two attack. Um, again, we'll just see if he puts the, the Butterfly Monk out. It would be sort of an ideal play, I think, for for Matt to do. It'd be nice if the program just was like, oh, you're out of mains and sides. Here you go. But, because I'm out of dice, so he kind of had an opportunity to roll my dice down. Yeah. Not that it mattered with kind of Mayoni, like so DNA, the illusion power really like didn't make any difference there. Yeah, some kind of it might make a difference in later rounds. I've encountered that same thing in, in uh, other inter iterations so, of the uh, original Gentechi. Where it's, I think Matt's just thinking through his options now. Flashing button to remind you, hey, I don't think he really wants to offer me up a, a Butterfly Monk with a Blood Archer on board because it's just an instant kill and status token to my snake. Mm. So we'll see what comes out of this here. Yeah, I don't have a good line right here. Yep, so he didn't uh, he didn't summon the monk. So now it's just a matter of whether Cole's going to take the three-point hit or not here, and he does. Yep. And I think we're fine with that because we get three damage on Cole. Again, the Hammer Knight's stuck with one damage on it after the end of the round. Um, he can summon the Butterfly Monk now. Um, but I have left the um, Blood Archer out of kill range from the butterfly monk so um you know the butterfly monk doesn't do much for him here other than get him a point of life back because i have just onboard removal now between gilder and um okay i'm gonna have to go in manual mode you know uh blood archer and, and various other tools so like even if he plays miss spirits correct um, uh, modify tokens, remove one damage. There we go. Oh, oh, sorry. No, you got it. Uh, all right, one, yeah. Two, okay. So I don't. We're, we're both doing it. <laughs> I'll let you do it. I don't know what. Uh, uh, actually, do it to my cards. I, I oh, he slash. I ain't gonna slash. Oh, he nature powered it. Okay. You can modify instead of summoning the butterfly monk. I think you're better off just summoning the butterfly monk if your idea is to to yeah. I think he decides that's that's not the right play, <laughs> uh, because. You definitely don't gain anything out of using the nature power on any of my units other than maybe the Gilder because you go first at top of the round. So if you do roll you know like another na monk. nature power, you can then spike the Gilder off before you attack and get rid of a unit guard, which forces Mayoni to guard again. Um, but that, that seems... I mean, you've got enough nature die. That's probably not illogical to think one die would roll that way. So I just think that you know um 
Yep, and this is where having that fadeaway would like, be nice. My board is going to come out really, really happy at the end of this round. And not that my opponent's board is going to be unhappy, but it's certainly probably not the position he wants to be in. Um, uh, in turn. Yeah, so I think we're going to pass out of round one here, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. This is a not so great spot. He could have put an extra point of damage on Mayoni with the butterfly the monk. Game. Excuse me. With the butterfly monk, because I am I am exhausted out. Yeah, I mean, I think the Hammer Knight root armor play is very strong. As it sits right now, I'm still winning the life battle. Effectively. Because it's currently 16 health to win versus 12 health to win. You're going to let your Hammer Knight die, or you're going to let Colt. Um, Snake is certainly going to get powerful here. So it was kind of one of those things where I was like, I'm. In the coming rounds. Because I still get one remaining damage, so. It gives me a chance to try to get the hammer knight down. It's 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 going to be hard, no doubt about it. So yeah, there's the last point from the butterfly monk. Pretty hard. hard what did me in in the mirror. So fifteen to twelve. So slight advantage, Mayoni, after round one, I think. The yeah. amount of resources. Certainly have a lot of board presence compared to Matt here. It's a it's a real thing. I mean that hammer knight with root armor is good for for sure. You know, and I I personally um, like but the way I've dealt with them in my past. We're still just in a position where. And took him out of the match. Yeah, we can take our time have that. to kill the Hammer Knight. <laughs> yes. Yep. So I think we're going to round two now. Yep. So Matt gets first player token. Yep. We got violinist. Yeah. Sympathy pain and uh, refresh. Uh, plays sure. Refresh is very interesting here for us. Uh, might get double use out of the snake. <sighs> which can come in very handy when we're talking about dealing with some of these threats. So I think depending on his open, but again, there's the power die, the nature power die. So I think he could have feasibly got to a place where he could have gotten my Gilder off board just using the nature power. He wouldn't have had the butterfly monk up, but I'm not sure that would have mattered if you're trying to pressure and do damage to Mayoni and get the most out of your Hammer Knight, you're going to force Mayoni to defend against one of those threats because, well, otherwise everything just dies to Cole Slash here. So, uh, and I don't think I want to trade a two-dice snake um, for my opponent's, you know, single card, essentially, because he's already played the other card. Um, so here's the attack. And this is where we can just stand that, uh, we're just going to take this from the butterfly monk. Like there's really no reason to not, and we'll sympathy pain, which, um, just allows us to, um, put damage back on coal, sort of, um, yeah. Sort of keeps us in the same game with Cole. So he meditates away a hundred blades. Obviously we're happy to see that with two enchanted violinists sitting in our hand. Um, we just go and play an owl here, and we might as well, right? Because it takes away coal gas to have owl. Um, and it shifts my opponent's attention to fighting the owl because I'm sure he doesn't want to lose another card in hand. When you think about coal, each card in hand is essentially a point of damage either to the opponent or something on their battlefield. And taking that away is a big deal. So we'll see what Matt does. Um, he's gonna play a card. Not sure. Two dice. Hundred blades. Yep. Okay. So a hundred blades. So Mayoni's up to seven damage now. 
So it's currently 13 to 10 in terms of health pool. So we're still maintaining that same value. He went ahead at 100 blades and nature powered. And I'm, I'm happy with that because that's a two dice and a three dice and a card to get rid of a single die owl. And we can just make another gilder and we'll just ping away the butterfly monk. It will heal the coal, but it triggers the snake token. And now my opponent can't actively slash. Um, can't actively slash the... We, we meditate a Golden Veil to go Golden Veil. We probably should have dropped an Enchanted Violinist from hand here instead, but uh, I, I still prefer keeping the Violinist in hand. Um, so we don't have to play another... Like, we don't have another Snake cost. So from a play cost perspective, we can just Command Strike now snake to hammer knight uh, deal two uh, i mean again this hammer knight's tricky to get rid of because of the root armor and the fact that we're not playing illusion so we don't have a direct kill spell um you know it'd have been nice to see uh you know something something out there like um I like strength them with weenies. Carl uh, punished me the other night with a, or Brian punished me the other night with. A, you know, like a, a close combat here in this deck. We, you know, three three close combats in the deck. Haven't meditated any away, and we haven't seen our first copy really fourteen cards deep. Uh, that's probably against the the norm. Uh, you know, I th you would expect to see one probably by the time you've gone through ten cards and four meds. Even if one of them ended up in the discard, you would think that you would see at least one. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. Okay, so again, you know, we don't we don't have a need to bring a ally, big ally back right now. I think our battlefield is currently full, if I remember right. We might be able to put one more on there. I don't remember for sure. Um, but I think. Seven blood points, but uh, your twenty life total. We can take a couple of different approaches here. I think number one. Yeah, it does. The blood archer is a, a significant threat to summoning the mist spirit, or um, the nature power die is also a significant threat to the mist spirit. So maybe I just offer up a violinist as to pull a card out of his hand. But I think I think we're still in a position where, you know, the best play here would be the command strike with the snake, do two damage. And so we'll attack. Yeah. So we're offering the blood archer up here. Uh, and I think that's too juicy of a target for my opponent not to stand in front of. Okay. It's the first time using uh, alert. We meditate away and enchant violinist. Again, idea here is to regrow, uh, and we make a double um, double charm, um, losing the massive growth. Massive growth is really here for. Uh, either a dumbed down snake or the gilder, or you can also massive growth an owl if you want. Both of those things are reasonably good targets. Again, against Cole and Chain of Violinist is really going to be a one and done. So you, it's kind of your whole turn. Uh, so in, a, in an ideal world here, my opponent's going to drop. Um, my opponent's going to drop a Miss Spirit or some small unit that I can command strike. I'll take the snake to four, it'll deal three and kill the hammer knight that way. Um, because as soon as the snake gets fourth counter, command strike just kills the hammer knight now. And because we have two gilders up, like my snake is st safe from the hammer knight and, um, it, you know, Mayoni doesn't have to tank the hit from hammer knight here. So, 
in a, in an ideal world, it also gives us the opportunity to refresh the snake and get in potentially for eight damage on Cole, which could be game end. Um, opponent drops another butterfly monk. Or rather, these monks could be a problem just in terms of extending Cole's health. They are kind of expensive when you look at half of, half of your dice pool being double molten gold, you know, basically being molten gold costs to get them out. Um, but they're reasonable when you get strengthened on the board. Okay, so... This is a tricky position, so I think the best position is to, to stall out, give him the Enchanted Violinist, um, and let him slash it now, because he doesn't have the nature die up, so if he spends a card, he's sort of getting significant advantage, and maybe I just pass back, I did pass back, just don't think my opponent is done. If he wants to, I guess, give me top of the round, that's probably okay. But I don't think he wants to be done yet. I think he's just trying to avoid letting that snake get big, which is smart on his part. Um, you know, basically monks are his best plays now because um, anything beyond that, you get into a position where... Okay, so you're going to play second hammer knight. Second hammer knight is interesting. Um... So I think we have to command strike here. Yep, and then this actually turns on my other snake for a kill of the big hammer knight. No, we don't want to do that. Oh, we do. We do go ahead and put the Enchanted Violinist on. I guess this forces him to slash the Violinist or risk losing the Hammer Knight and keeps my nature die up. Because I have two Gilders, like, I can defend with the Gilder that has one damage on it and the overkill doesn't... It can kill the Violinist, um, but it doesn't kill the other Gilder, so it still lets the other Gilder protect um, from that. He strengthens it, which I don't think matters here. Um, he's targeting the snake. So again, we just, we just take Gilder and stand, stand in front of it. Let the Gilder soak that damage. Oh, duh. Um. Yep. So the overkill gets the... Uh, gets the chain of violinist, which is fine. I still think probably best play there is not to give him the violinist there and instead give him um, just the nature power swing. I don't think we need the nature power die for anything there, so like at the end of the day, why not? Um, just kill the hammer knight immediately through the command strike, but I guess we couldn't do nature power die because we command strike, so um, we probably don't want to pass main there, so I think again, best. Probably still the best play. In some ways, it was great. I guess we could have summoned a uh, Silver Snake book just to like buy main action time, but that's two dice for nothing. Um, it works out okay here because now our snake is five attack. Um, it's a real question of whether or not he's going to take that five on the chin from Cole, which will take Cole to ten. Uh, I think he's going to. I mean, I think you have to, right? Because otherwise you just lose your singular biggest threat. Yep. So he, he lets, they let them trade. Uh, I think that actually works out okay. Yeah, I understand. Overall, because I can just make a new snake. I'm willing to make that trade. <laughs> um, it probably extends the game out a little bit. Like, yeah. well, it's, uh, plenty of time was spent making that a big snake. Yeah. 
But I was just in a position to remove uh, uh, essentially a two for one there. Um, and mine's replaceable and his isn't. Yeah. So. Okay, so we lose a Blood Archer, perhaps us to make another snake. Um, so go. One thing to be cautious about is, as you saw there, I was trying to meditate from the top of the deck, I just hit the wrong button, and I, I mean, you can pull up your whole deck, and I, I would like to see that change. Uh, in Ash Techie, just so that the deck is not as visible zone to anybody unless you have a card that allows you to access that. Um, okay, so we've got a Hammer Knight here. We've got our own Hammer Knight now. Two of them, technically. We just can't play two in one round. Um, so we're just going to get back on Owl Plan. And what the owl does is puts my opponent in a board position where their only choice is to play cards from hand and deal with the owl. Because if they don't deal with the owl, then they end up in a situation where um, coal is just turned down in value. So plays a, a chant of revenge here. I don't think Chanter Revenge does much, but uh, he does play a, another Strengthen. So we're getting close to that Focus 2 power on Strengthen. That could matter if he can get around my board, but um, I think right now we're still in pretty good shape. Um, like, I think we can just play Owl, or excuse me, Memory Drain on Owl, take away a card. Um, and that's pretty powerful here because he, he spent two cards from hand. So we get rid of a root armor. That That's a happy sight. Uh, that's one less root armor that we have to deal with because we saw how difficult dealing with a uh, single, single hammer knight root armor can be. Um, so we meditate and we're going to go ahead and prep to play that hammer knight. Uh, we get rid of a um, molten gold and get rid of a... Uh, sorry, I I didn't see the other card. I think it was a massive growth. Ideally, we want sympathy pain online so that if he does damage to us directly somehow, i.e., chant anything of that nature, um, we we actually get two damage to his one. Uh, just gets us closer to victory with Cole. Played someone the other day and, they were playing and we have time to just go ahead and play Hammer Knight and then play Snake. Okay. Or play Snake and then play Hammer Knight. Both are, are equally valid plays no. in, in whatever order. Depends on what he puts out here. But down two cards, you know, it's down to two cards, long. he's only got small threats left. And that probably is a problem just when you look at a particular board that like this where... problem with Snake from time to time. You know, I can put out a Hammer Knight. So all my archers are down. Uh, these are the last two Hammer Knights. So that's going to be the end of big ally threats in this deck. Yeah, it's it's really going to come down to now. Yep. So it's literally uh, um, uh, a book or two of uh, like what happens with with our summons. And I think I have a stronger summons presence overall. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and I think you know you got to have another plan although to be fair he is beating me pretty handily in draw i think i think he's got 14 cards to my other plan if you don't you probably nine so he is definitely um ahead of me in terms of fatigue damage right now um that really does sort of even the game up cuz i'd have eight health to his 10 so he actually uh is winning if you look if we go to fatigue. Okay. Iron worker is cool. Iron worker is is cool. Um, I'm 
but we can summon a snake. Gilder can inherit the snake. And we're already, we're like turning snake on, right? Like, so now snake's going to have one attack. Hammer Knight attacks into the Iron Worker, makes two. We're going to play the Hammer Knight first. It's an interesting decision. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the right decision because ultimately, like, what we want from our Hammer Knight is the ability to snipe uh, two Miss Spirits off the field to make Snake big. Um, but so far we have our opponent's board controlled and that's, that's a huge part and factor here. Um, you know, again, where he's down to just being able to only play Miss Spirits and Butterfly Monks, those things are meaningful, but, uh, end of the day, they may not matter, uh, if we can build a large enough board, a set of board threats. And it's possible that that's just going to happen here. I mean, he can he can spend the nature die and the card in hand to slash away the gilder or the three eyed owl, um, but you know, end of end of it all, uh, it's going to be difficult. Um, and so, I'm not sure what he did there. Rose Fire Dancer, she's she's a nasty little minx. Um. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I thought we were down to one card. Maybe I don't know what the mistake was, but <clears throat> so depending on what Matt does here overall, I think we're still in the driver's seat of getting to the win here. Um, so it's going to be my go. This is where I just have time. So we set up the snake. Um, and we just say go. Yeah. So he played a butterfly monk is what he did. Okay. Once a snake, always a snake. <laughs> so now it's a question of, you know, what's he going to do with the iron worker? Um, you know, if you strengthen the Iron Worker, the Gilder just steps in front of it. If you don't strengthen the Iron Worker, the Hammer Knight just steps in front uh, as as an alert unit. So, Rosefire Dancer, equally sort of tricky card. Um, going to do a point of damage. I'm going to Golden Veil it. Um, main reason is I don't want the like the Slash to come into play. And I don't have to worry about the dancer now, so I just force his exhaustion for a one for one. And he's not threatening anything else. He's out of dice now, so like we just attack with Hammer Knight and see if Cole takes it. If not, I get two counters on Snake. Yep. Yeah, this isn't gonna work out. Either. And we still get two counters on Snake this way by uh, after uh, after shocking the um, Rose Fire Dancer. That turns on the Command Strike kill from Snake to Iron Worker. We just don't have to use it yet. We can't do the refresh this round. So we can hold a gilder up if we need to. Again, the, I think he's going to have to most likely, like you're not going to want to summon one Miss Spirit. So I think the best thing he can do is um, we gave up the sympathy pain play here, but um, yeah, strengthen, strengthen the iron worker. He's going to try to attack the snake. Gilder's going to step in front of that and give the snake a command strike value or give the snake a inheritance value, excuse me. Um, so there's the inheritance token. Um, I feel like we've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> well, have we been down this road? What? <laughs> 
So now it's a question of I'd be silly not to do you know. command strike? I think you have to do that there, uh, no matter what. Um, Play the Gilder, shoot for one. I don't think you have much choice other than to do that. See, I think the snake just attacks the the iron worker. Take revenge. Yep. I like that the button actually says take. But revenge. we could just <laughs> command strike the iron worker and attack with the snake. Um, next round. Actually. Yeah, chance probably the uh, the gilder damage was just incidental, yeah, like. The, we just want to put a Gilder back on the board in case my opponent plays something. Well, that way the Gilder can stand in front of it. That last card could be Fade Away. Um, kind of, uh, and not having the Golden Veil means that the Snake is um, going to go bye-bye. And it's still a cold um, And I think that's, that's sure. most likely what it is, but it it's hard to say. Uh, when I was building, I built with uh, Summon's Fleeping Widows. Yep. In ceremony, so many times. So you would like, think if my opponent was going to use fade away. Yeah, I mean. They try to fade away the knight versus the snake. But now the snake is sort of a knight, so it kind of doesn't make any difference. They're they're one and the same. And I think you have to have you have to be pretty much four ceremonial deep to make them work. And that that yeah. sometimes is pretty punishing if you don't have other good ceremonial things to do. And to be fair, in the master set, there's not a lot of great ceremonial cards outside of widows. So, they're, they're I mean, I like strengthen a lot, and I like strengthen a lot with little weenies when you can get, you know, when you can get through. It's sometimes hard to do. Yep, there's the fade away on the snake. I'm Losing the snake is, no you know, gonna hurt here. Uh, I think it just turns into we need to put as much damage on PB as possible. So we just start attacking PBs. Because um, if we do 6, it takes him to 11. Uh, and we have just another Hammer Knight to play next round. Yeah, but there's a clock on Cole too. So, so that's the that's 6. Even for 8 to 8, there's a significant difference to uh, 8 to 8. <laughs> He's got 8 damage on him now, so it's 8 to 8. That's true. Uh, since he's out of dice, there's not much he's going to do. He's just going to pass back to us, and then we're going to refresh the snake and take it to 11. Um, All right. Well, you're not going to like me a ton here. Could have played hyper conservative here and you're not gonna like me a ton. got the iron worker down before giving him a grip of seven cards. Maybe we should have. Yep. Yep. Or maybe we should. I don't I know. You're going to get your benefit out of it. Yeah, I was going to try to get as much out of it as I could. I, I was hoping you were going to leave it up because what I was going to do is uh, refresh the Hammer Knight. And then because the ultimately we're just going to meditate into our Hammer Knight but, and play the Hammer Knight and go double Hammer Knight. Same, six damage total. So, um, I'll, take, I'll take my six damage so. where I can get it and lose my snake. Taking them to 11. Um, uh, yeah, the fadeaway, right now, fadeaway sort of dictated that play. Yeah, I may have played more conservatively if if the fadeaway hadn't uh, come into play. But all right, so now oh, and the iron we have a really oh, yeah. interesting yeah, I knew I was gonna fill your hand potential win con. Um, to... That win con is uh, now to... if our opponent can do damage to us. To stop the bleed, we can sympathy pain to put him in multiple range and then multiple to win. Um, but we can also just hammer knight attack. Um, we can close combat. I mean, there's there's literally a million ways we sort of come out of this now. And so drawing the seven cards doesn't matter. From iron worker for Matt. We'll see what he does because he's got first go first here. Um, like the owl means absolutely nothing to a seven card hand, so like like the owl is just a blocker now for PB damage. Um, I 
the Hammer Knight's sort of a distraction, I think, for Matt if he's thinking about... He thinks that's the biggest threat, right? So, like, biggest threat says, uh, I need to I need to do this thing. So, he 100 blades, I think, here. And that turns on the sympathy pain. And so, that's going to be game. Um, so, unless he has a redirect, which he doesn't because he's not playing the right colors, we take Cole to 13 here. Off of the 100 blades play. You're going to slash away the owl. Okay. And then we're going to meditate tw twice. Top of the deck. Top of the deck. And then we're going to play Molten Gold for the win. So. The reason I took the other nature power up was ah. just because. Um, Seems fair. Yeah. If for some reason my opponent could prevent that. Yes, but. And then I just wanted to have the correct dice configuration to move forward, but uh, Molten Gold gets it done for us and uh, closes the game out. And that's uh, that's Mayoni versus Cole. I think you know at the end of the day, these are the kinds of matchups you want to see with Mayoni is Cole and uh, you know a, a singular or a few small threats, and then a bunch of smaller things that you can sort of eat up with ping damage and and other function functional items. Uh, that makes snakes big. So, um, yeah, so this has been my round four matchup for Ash Techie. Um, again, using Master Set only. I appreciate that you have come to the channel, have watched our games unfold. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this content so far. And if you did, you know, a thumbs up just tells us that we're doing a good job. Uh, you know, obviously the biggest compliment you can give us is if you subscribe to the channel. Uh, otherwise, if you see something that should have maybe been done differently or that you think was a misplay or a potential uh, way to play differently, love to hear about it. Be sure to let us know in the comments. Otherwise, we'll be back with round five of the Ash Techie Swiss Rounds. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day. And, and just remember, uh, stay good to each other. If you need, and mm -hmm. uh...